We've heard it all before, haven't we? The Catholic Church is the enemy of science, progress, and reason. Well, it's all nonsense, and we're going to debunk it mercilessly. Join me right now for The Catholic Church, Builder of Civilization. Welcome to the Catholic Church, Builder of Civilization. I'm your host, Thomas Woods. I'd like to begin this 13-program series with a fact that's fairly obvious to most of us. There's a bit of a double standard in the world when it comes to the Catholic Church. You can say anything you like about the Catholic Church. Your career won't be over. No one will care. There'll be no candlelight vigils or hunger strikes. You say anything you like about it, and that's just fine. If anything, you'll be even more welcome in fashionable circles than before. So, what's the result of that? The result is that you can get away with saying the most absurd, ludicrous things about the Catholic Church. And people believe it. People are inclined to believe every ridiculous calumny against the Catholic Church. But worse still, some Catholics themselves, I think, have begun to interiorize some of these criticisms. And deep down, I think they themselves wonder, has the Church really been a positive influence in history, after all? Hasn't she been responsible only for repression and ignorance? And hasn't she been an opponent of the sciences? We've all been taught to believe this. It would be a miracle if people didn't believe it. But it's not true. And in this series, we're going to show why it's not true. And we're going to show the true glory of the Catholic Church. Now, the attacks on the Catholic Church and on religious belief in general have accelerated just over the past five years or so. We've already seen in recent years, best-selling books by Richard Dawkins and Daniel Dennett and Sam Harris condemning religious belief in general as irrational and foolish and in effect they're saying to children in this country, your parents are, are stupid for teaching you the faith. Worse than that is that after the July 7, 2005 bombings in London, what we began to see is this trend, that Islamic terrorism is now giving intellectuals an excuse to oppose all religion. The argument being that all religion is irrational, all religion can give rise to violence, so it should all be condemned. So, for example, in, in Scotland's Sunday Herald, we read Muriel Gray saying, the cause of all this misery, mayhem, violence, terror, and ignorance is, of course, religion itself. And she called religion dark ages nonsense. For the government of a secular country such as ours, she said, to treat religion as if it had real merit, instead of regarding it as a ridiculous anachronism, which education, wisdom, and experience can hopefully overcome in time, is one of the most depressing developments of the 21st century. Now, I'll leave aside the fact that she doesn't know how to use the word hopefully correctly. That's not another matter. The point is, this is our critic. Another critic, Polly Toynbee in the London Guardian, said, It is now time to get serious about all religion and draw a firm line between the real world and the world of dreams. Mm. In the London Spectator, Matthew Paris said, What unites an extremist mullah with a Catholic priest or evangelical Protestant minister is actually much more significant and interesting than what divides him from them. Well, these criticisms have become routine. Day in and day out, we hear them. All religion is the enemy of progress. But the Catholic Church in particular is consistently viewed as the enemy of science and progress and knowledge. Consistently. Now, why is that? How did that happen? In part, it began 200 years ago or more in the so-called Enlightenment which was a period in 18th century European history in which the intellectual classes became extraordinarily hostile to the church. They disparaged the Middle Ages consistently. In fact, that's why they had the, the word enlightenment. Because the idea was that before the enlightenment, before the wonderful 18th century, all we had was misery and backwardness and ignorance fostered by the Catholic Church. But now, thankfully, 
we have secular intellectuals to bring us enlightenment. I sometimes think that the most depressing job on earth must be to be a history, a history professor who teaches about the Middle Ages. It must be the most depressing job on earth. All day long, you lecture about the Middle Ages, and you say, Middle Ages weren't so bad. In fact, a lot of great things happened in the Middle Ages. Catholic Church made a lot of great things possible. You lecture on this all day long. You write books and articles on it. You even appear on television. You appear on radio. And you talk about it. And what happens? You get home at night. You turn on the TV. Nothing you've done has made any effect. Everybody still believes the Middle Ages was a time of ignorance and repression, and, and it was all the fault of the Catholic Church. All of that stuff, in effect, cannot be dislodged. It must be extremely depressing. Now, why, why, is it so, why are these falsehoods so resistant to the truth? Why is it so hard to get people to change their minds on this? Well, ever since the Enlightenment, what has taken root in our culture and in our way of thinking is that the Catholic Church is assumed to be wrong, and that secularism, that is the idea of organizing society and all of life without reference to God, that is said to be the source of progress. So by definition, Anything the church is connected to involves retrogression. Whereas anything that a secular intellectual brings us, well, that brings us progress. And that has been the lens through which history has been viewed over the past 200 years. That's why it's only over the past maybe 50 years that we've begun to see historians finally cracking through this nonsense and finally saying, wait a minute, not only did the Catholic Church not obstruct the sciences, she may have helped to foster them. Not only did secularists not invent the science of economics, for example, but in fact it turns out it was Catholic priests and professors who developed the ideas of economics centuries earlier, and on and on and on. But it's taken a long time to crack through this accepted idea that the church is, re is responsible for retrogression and ignorance. It's taken forever. Now let's think about some of these areas in which the Catholic Church has really built our civilization. I mean, I choose that word advisedly. Why is it that the Catholic Church can be said to be her builder? Well, for example, consider how we think about charity, charitable work. We think that you're engaged in charity when you help somebody without any expectation of a reward, when you do it because it's good and it's right to do it, you do it because you know that in the grand scheme of things, that unfortunate person is in some sense your equal, having been made in the image and likeness of God. And so you help that person. You don't help that person because you expect three years down the road to revisit him and say, remember that 15 bucks I gave you? Why don't you cough it up? or to revisit him and say, I need votes, I need some political support, why don't you come help me? We don't do it so we can tell the whole world, hey, look at what a great guy I am, I just gave that guy ten bucks. We don't do it for those reasons, we do it out for the reasons that I gave, purely disinterested motives. Well, where do we get that idea? That idea comes from the Catholic Church. Because in ancient Greece or Rome, if you had said, oh, I'm going to go help somebody with no expectation of any reciprocity, I'm just going to go do it out of the goodness of my heart, they would have thought you were crazy. What are you talking about, man? Much less the idea that I would pray for and even try to help my own enemies. What are you, insane? But yet today, we take this for granted as the ideal, that the good man tries to observe these principles. But again, where do they come from? They come from the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church teaches this about charity. The ancient world didn't. So here's an area in which things that we take for granted, this is the way we think, we take it for granted. Where does that come from? It comes from the Catholic Church. We'll have more to say about that in a future episode. How about the idea of rights, that I have a right to own property, or a right not to be killed, for example. Where does that idea of rights come from? Well, we've always been told that secularists in the Enlightenment, or just before the Enlightenment, came up with this idea in the 17th century. All of a sudden, boom, rights just developed. Well, that's not true either. And once again, modern research is coming to the rescue of Catholicism. I know that sounds odd. You think modern researchers, you want to run the other way.